My friend decided to sabotage me by sharing with me something that he knew I wouldn't be able to resist buying. Electric bikes for kids discounted from $500 to $150. And of course, I couldn't pass up buying them, so I bought three of them. And we're going to assemble one now, take a look, test it out, and just see what it's like. So what do you get for $150? Well, you get a whole bike, you get an electric wheel, and you get a battery. And I don't know how to tell you how good of a deal that is, but you pretty much can't buy a bike, an electric wheel, or a battery by themselves for $150. It probably isn't as good a quality as some bikes, but it definitely looks nice. The first thing we're gonna do is put this on charge. The bike comes with a charger, and on the battery is this charge port. All you have to do is plug this in, and then you'll see that the light has turned red, which means that it's charging. Right now it has two bars, eventually it'll have three bars, but you'll know that it's done charging because this light will turn green. It is worth noting that this is a lithium ion battery and you don't have to wait until it's fully charged before you can use it. I'm just putting it on charge now because I know we're gonna be spending some time building the bike. Now overall, this looks like a pretty easy bike to build. We have a front wheel that needs mounting. We'll have to connect the front brakes. We have the handlebars to mount and we do that with this metal clamp. You can see that all of the cables and the wires are already connected for the handlebars. And we also have pedals to install, but overall, really not too much to do. If you've never assembled a bike before, this might be a little overwhelming. Just be patient and do everything first with your fingers. Make sure things are actually working before you use a tool to tighten something. So the first thing we're gonna wanna work on is the handlebars. Now you're gonna wanna make sure that the front fork is aligned correctly. The brake line needs to be coming up like this. If your brake line is wrapped around, spin the fork around until it's correct. If your front fork is facing backwards, everything will be back to front. So once you've got this positioned, now we need to get the handlebars into position. And with the handlebars, you wanna make sure that the brake levers are facing forward and that all of the cables are aligned correctly. You don't want anything crossing over. And so you can see this cable comes over here and goes up, and then these cables come over here and they go this way. So that looks about right. Now, this is probably the most fiddly part of this whole thing, and that is getting this bracket on. So you might want an extra set of hands to do this. You can let the handlebars lay down like this because you can adjust it afterwards. You wanna get your bolts and just hand thread them to the point in which you have a couple of threads in each one. Don't tighten them up too much because if you start tightening one up, you won't be able to get the other ones in. So just get them in there real loose. Once you have all four in there, go ahead and start tightening them up. It came with a few different wrenches. There's this one that has a Phillips head on the end. That isn't the one you want. The one you want is this one. Not the small end, but the big end. If it seems like it's not going in, back it out and make sure you've got it threaded correctly. You don't want to ruin these threads. It would really suck. This is definitely the scariest bit because it doesn't even look like they go in straight. Anyway, once you get that portion of it done, the rest should be fairly straightforward. With the front wheel, just make sure you get anything like this off. Hold this inner section still and loosen these nuts. Um, don't let them come off, but just loosen them so that you have some space here. You see that? Because we're gonna slide it onto the front fork. Now, of course, the easiest way to do this is to turn the bike upside down. And then we're gonna take the wheel and we're gonna try and put it down on the fork. You can see these have to be on the outside. It's good on that side, but on this side, we gotta lift it back up and get them all the way out there. Might have to loosen this knot a little bit more. Once you get it down, you'll see that this, this little hook goes into this tiny little hole, and then you can tighten the knot up. Same on the other side. you can use the 15 side of the wrench to tighten these up. Get them real nice and snug. You don't want these coming off while you're riding. 
Next up is the pedals. And you can see that this is a right side pedal and this is the left side crank, so that's not gonna work. It's possible yours might not be labeled, but just know that these only go in in one direction. The left crank is strange because instead of righty tidy lefty loosey, it is the opposite. So you can see I'm actually having to turn this one backwards. You can use the 15 side of that wrench again. You keep going until you get it all the way in. If you're having trouble getting it with the wrench, you can also use this in the end of the pedal. Then of course we do the same with the other side. Just kind of get it rolling in there. This one's going in a little bit easier than the last one. You want to get this fairly tight. If you don't, the pedals will come off. All right, now that that's done, we have to get the brakes connected up, which can sometimes be easier said than done. If you trace the brake cable up to the handle, you'll see this little adjustment mechanism. Make sure that this is all the way this way, and then tighten the entire mechanism as tight as it will go in. That'll give you a little more slack on the cable, and you can adjust it later if your braking isn't sufficient. This is impossible to do with one hand. But basically, I want this thing to go into this thing. I'll try and do it, and it's gonna be really hard to catch, but let's see what we can do. Well, maybe that'll work. Okay, so pull this over, and just see if you can get this in there like that. Now, you might not be able to do this, or you might be able to. For me, it worked. So you can see it's in, and then this little rubber piece goes over here. Although apparently that's not gonna stick on, but that's fine. And when we pull the brakes, it works. If you can't get yours on, you may need to loosen this, which will allow this whole thing to kind of come apart, get it on, and then tighten it up. It's just a little bit more work. I think it's also worth noting that this has a pretty nice kickstand. You can adjust the seat by, adjust, by putting and then retightening this real quick and real easy. And that's pretty much the whole bike. I think it's time to have my son test it out. All right, how's the battery doing? Hey, three bars. Not fully charged, but good to go either way. When, when it's down to one bar and that one bar is flashing, that's really the time that you want to stop. And also, don't ever leave it fully discharged in storage. You should really be at least at two bars for storage. Are you ready, buddy? Yeah. Hey, okay. Let's, um, let's mount the battery. You put it in there, and you lock it in there. Okay, you want to lock it in? Awesome. Okay. Okay, yep. So you have to turn the battery on before the bike will turn on, right? Yeah. Kickstand good, and then... Okay, and then select your power level. All right, should we go to the road? Yeah. Okay. Does it work? Yeah. Hey. All right, give it a shot. Okay, go down and, and loop around back to me. Test your brakes. Huh? Test your brakes. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> I guess they work though, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we're on full power, right? Yeah. Because it says high. I'm gonna put this down to um, the electric wheel to see if I can catch the sound of the electric wheel on the camera, okay? Okay. Okay, hang on. So it really doesn't make any sound, right? Yep. Okay, now you just gotta do 50 laps and you can come back in. Okay. All right, bye. 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 I'll be back in two years. Okay. There he goes. Never to be seen again. So that was a really fun build and my son really likes the bike. But I think the ultimate question here is, is this bike worth $150? And in my opinion, I have to say yes. 
And you might not know, but I've built many different e-bikes over the past few years. And a battery costs at least $200. An e-bike kit costs over $200. And a good bike costs over $200. So at $150, it is a steal. And even at the original price of $500, it's still a pretty good deal. I've personally found these hub motors to be quite reliable. This particular model has waterproof connectors. So I think the biggest concern I have is the battery. So I thought maybe we would take a brief second and open this battery up and take a look inside just to see what the build quality is. And so we're gonna do that. This is the first time I'm looking inside the battery. So you get to experience that with me. So this is the battery. It feels like it's made of metal right here. It's very solid. Like it doesn't feel flimsy at all. There are three screws on this end and three screws on this end. I will say that this screw is not in all the way. <laughs> so hopefully that's not a sign of things to come, but these are Phillips screws. So let's just undo them and see what happens. There's a sticker here that says warranty void if removed. So clearly I am avoiding my warranty. Oh my God. Okay, this calls for the big guns. Okay, so at the bottom we have the actual power connector for the bike, and then this is the charge connector. And you can see these wires are heading down here. I don't know that we can get this out. Let's try the other end. All right, and on this end, we have a battery management board. And this is what's gonna keep this battery safe when you're charging it inside. If the cells in this battery ever go bad, this will prevent it from overcharging or discharging or basically catching fire. And yeah, this cylinder is definitely metal. Many of the popular e-bike batteries actually have plastic cases, so this is pretty cool. All of this white gunk that you see is there to secure different connections in place. This is clearly a well thought out design. I don't think that I can open this battery any more than that without potentially damaging it. So I'm gonna leave it where it's at. But I will say this looks to be a very solid build and I would certainly expect this battery to last several hundred cycles. I don't know how easy it would be to replace these in the future, but it does look as though it's using 18650 cells. So there are probably people out there that would be willing to replace these for you when they die. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond. And if you liked this video, don't forget to press like. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing and I will see you in the next one.